you might have come across gauge numbers when it comes to various metal products. Gauge numbers matter because they indicate the thickness of metal being sold and of course it does make a difference in price as well as strength of the material or durability for the purpose considered. So gauge numbers tell you the thickness of the metal and I'll explain how. Where you can come across gauge numbers are flat products or round products. Flat products could include, and this is just some of it, but just to get you the ideas, this one is a post saddle bracket. You know, you build a deck, it's got some posts, it goes into some concrete, and uh, this one's there. Gauge 10, super heavy duty. Framing anchors, nailing anchors, uh, anything of that sort has sheet metal products that are folded, pressed, punched, and uh, have gauge numbers on them. Hurricane clips that go on the roof that hold edges of the plywood or whatever you have on the roof together. Uh, washers, square or round, have gauge numbers. This product here, used by your plumber, has a gauge number on it. Just flashing, any kind of flashing. Uh, there is 14 gauge, uh, sorry, there is 24 gauge flashing, there is 26 gauge flashing. One is more expensive and more durable and longer lasting than the other. The other one is the cheap. You can tear it with your bare hands. Barely thicker than a baking foil, basically. Okay, this is just a little of a can. You get the idea if you work around uh, those products. Round, some examples of round products are wire cables, wire ropes. Wire ropes are made of individual strands and uh, the strands have a wire gauge. The wire itself doesn't, but the strands in the wire, the individual fibers or have. Nails of all kinds, whether roofing nail or uh, duplex nails, and wires. Electricians need to use wires in their work. Let me show you how these numbers go a little bit. Here you can see on this one, this wire is 22 gauge and it says 22 American wire gauge AWG. Take a look at the thickness or thinness of the wire inside. And this one here is house wire. This is how it's sold. And it's sold as 14-3 house wire because it's American wire gauge is gauge 14 and it's copper. And the two of them are insulated. So, uh, here is your 14-3. It's gauge 14, all of them, and three pieces inside this jacket. You can see the difference that gauge 14 here in my uh, right hand is a lot thicker than gauge 22 here inside the pink jacket there. Uh, even closer there. These gauge numbers are going, let me see, they go from zero to, uh, let's go to 30, and this one is the thickest, and this one is the thinnest. The reason for it is because uh, these sheet metal products are made like your mama makes a pastry for, a, for an apple pie with a rolling pin in the kitchen. You start out with some thick lump of dough and you make it thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner with every passing of the uh, rolling pin. Something like that happens to sheet metal as well. It starts in a big lump in, a, in an ingot or a billet and uh, it passes through pressure rollers and it gets thinner and thinner every time. Here is a standard wire gauge. Let's zoom in there. Actually, I'm just going to lift it up, that's faster. And you can see the numbers on it. It's got a bunch of holes and a bunch of gaps on it. The gauge of a sheet metal, and this is how to use it, can be determined by these gaps here. Whatever fits in the gap here, that's the gauge of the metal. So here is gauge zero, and whatever fits through this gap here, the big gap, forget about the hole, that's gauge zero. So there's gauge zero, one. Zero is the material, thickness of the material that you start with. And then uh, when, you pa when it passes through, uh, say, one set of pressure rollers, this is how it could be visualized really well, then it's down to a thickness of gauge one, and it gets thinner and thinner as it passes through more and more pressure rollers, 
and after four passes, it's not exactly four passes, but you know, just work with me here. It's a, you can visualize it this way probably the best. Let's say after four passes or four setups, it's uh, down to that thickness there, and then the fifth, seventh, eighth, tenth. Here, I know that this post saddle bracket has a thickness of such. It's gauge 10. This is how to use it. So that's why, forget the hole next to the number 10, just go with the gap there. It's gauge 10. Here's this nail. It's a lot easier to lift. Let me see. This one is not gauge 10. Not gauge 11, not gauge 9, eh, there. gauge 7, it fits through there. Gauge 8, nah, no, it doesn't go through there. So it's gauge 7. You kind of get the idea. And when it comes to flashing, flashing can be really thin. And this would be gauge 18 there. 21, no. 20, no. 19, no. Uh, 18 there, it works. So this one is gauge 18 flashing. And if somebody wants to give you gauge 26 flashing, it's just about as thick as baking foil. And some of these gauge numbers here are, uh, it goes up to 30 here, but there's more, 31, 32, 33. But for the 33, you're gonna need to use the very little gap there. Okay, you get the idea. So that's how the gauge numbers work. And uh, when it comes to electricians, and there's going to be more math videos being done with the gauge number and the gauge of wire, it, because it is important for carrying enough amps and, and enough electrical load. Lastly here, take a look at this tool here. On this side you can see American wire gauge numbers, 10 to 20, and uh, gauge 20 is a thinner wire than gauge 10. On the opposite side of this, uh, of this uh, uh, wire gauge template here, you can see some other numbers. These are decimal inches. Let's start with the zero. The zero would be gauge zero here on this side. Okay, I'm gonna flip it slower. It's 0.3 inches. Okay, that's one third of an inch. I know you cannot find one third of an inch on your ruler. Don't worry about it. These are decimal inches. Let's go to gauge 10. What is the actual thickness of gauge 10? Flip it around and you find that number. A little more than one tenth of an inch. There, point zero point one four zero. That's gauge 12 here would be one tenth of an inch. I know it's not one eighth, it's not one sixteenth, it's one tenth, okay? Just work with the decimal system here, okay? These are the actual thicknesses of the, of the metal products that fit through those gaps at the front, okay? And if you do the math on these ones, uh, say let's pick that one. 0.1, let me just run this 0.109 up to 0.1, okay, one tenth of an inch, it's gauge 12. If you go from gauge 12 to gauge 6, the gauge number doubles. Let's see what happens to the decimal. The decimal also roughly doubles 0 0.01, one tenth. Here you have two tenths of an inch, roughly. But if you go from 12 to 24, it may not be the case. There's 12 and there's 24. So 24 goes there. Yes, gauge 24 is 0 0.025. It's not half of 0 0.1. Half of 0 0.1 would be 0 0.05. This one is not 0 0.05. 0 0.05 is there. So half the thickness of gauge 12 is that one gauge 18 okay it's not a linear scale it has to do with how much metal is being displaced at a time underneath these heavy pressure rollers and uh, uh, the thinner as it gets it gets easier to um, easier to displace and uh, make it into a thin roll or a thin wire so these are the sheet metal numbers the important thing is that the thinner it is, the higher the number 
because the more time it passes through pressure rollers to make it into a thinner either sheet or wire product. Okay, watch out for the gauge numbers because you can save money or you can lose money if you don't pay attention to flashing or, uh, or wires for your electrical uh, wiring in the house.